I'm back! <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> you may not have noticed I was gone, but I was. I was gone for like two weeks, which is the longest I've ever gone without uploading a video. Hello, friends! Oh, hey guys. Remember me? It's been a minute. Did you miss us? Get it. Because we missed you. How are we doing? Today, we are going to be reviewing my 2023 reading goals, seeing whether I achieved them. Then we're going to go through some life goals for 2024, because I don't feel like I share stuff like that with you very often and I'm just feeling like I, I want to and then we're gonna get into my reading goals for 2024 as well hello friends that's what we're gonna be doing today I feel like we need a little bit of a debrief though about why I've been gone I have been so ill <laughs> if you remember my last video was my Christmas book haul video where I was ill I was ill before Christmas from like the 20th of December over Christmas you know up until the last days of the year then I actually started getting better guys I started like feeling good last few days of the year I was like ready for 2024 1st of January fell the sickest I've felt in a long time <laughs> with a chest infection I rotted in bed for five days I'm starting to feel better now and I'm back but yeah this is a video I do every year where we react to last year's I feel like it's a good way to bookend the year and then we'll get into what my goals are for 2024 and at the same time 2024 I have a lot of goals and also not a lot of goals it's a strange it's a strange year and we'll get into that when we talk about 2024 but shall we just begin and react to what my reading goals were last year and see how I did. I've spoken to you all throughout the year about a lot of these reading goals, kind of giving you updates on how they were doing, referring back to some of them. Some of them, I feel like there's gonna be a few I don't remember making, but I feel like most of them I kind of kept track on throughout the year and know how well or not well I did <laughs> at them. So now we just dive into it, get into reacting to my goals of last year. In terms of the amount of books I would like to read in 2022, I'm setting my Goodreads goal <laughs> to 100 books, okay? I discovered I do not do well with negative feedback. I need positive affirmation, okay? So Goodreads ever telling me I'm one book behind schedule, I'm five books behind schedule, that does not motivate me to read more, that motivates me to read less. So I'm setting it to 100 so that it keeps telling me, oh my God, you're doing so well, you're so ahead of schedule. But I would, in the back of my mind, I would really like to reach 150 books for the first time ever this year. Guys, I did it! I you're talented, you're thoughtful, you do it all and I am very proud of you. I did it! I achieved this reading goal. Last year was the first year I have ever read 150 books in a year, ever. I have never read that many books in a year and it had been my goal the previous year and I hadn't reached it. I did do what I said, I set my Goodreads goal to 100 books and then once I reached 100 I upped it to 150 because I don't want it to tell me I'm I'm amount of books behind schedule. I haven't read anything yet this year. It's the 9th of January when I'm filming this. I haven't finished a book. I haven't even, I've read 40 pages of a book <laughs> this year. So I'm, my Goodreads goal is at 100 currently and I am behind again. <laughs> which I don't like, I'm just not looking at it. But yeah, this was my biggest goal of last year. I would say it's why I said it first, was to read 150 books. If we're honest, yes, I was like, oh, I'm saying it to my 100. But the goal was to for that to help me reach 150. And I'm so proud of myself. I've never read that much. Who knows if I'll ever read that much again? I would love to. I would love to hover around 150 from now on, because I feel like just even for the amount of content I wanna make, I kind of need to read that much. But I'm so proud of myself. This was really the big goal. And if I achieved this, everything else is okay. I'm saying that because maybe I haven't achieved the rest of them. I read 155 actually, I overshot. I'm an overachiever, I read 155, <laughs> five books is fair. I feel like we can all be proud of me. Well done, Megan. I mentioned series and my goal this year with series, I mentioned in the series wrap up video, is just to have a net negative with how many series I'm starting and finishing. So just to have a net negative. <laughs> just, just a net negative, just a net negative. Oh. Let's be realistic. I went into this goal in detail in my series review video of the year at the end of last year. So I'll leave that link below if you want to go check it out. Depending on how you view it, I did achieve this. Because what we did in that video is any books I got caught up on during the year, we counted as like not currently reading. So we took them off the currently reading total. And I think that meant that I was on the same amount of currently reading series I was at the start of the year. So technically I kind of did do this. <laughs> The rules don't apply. Even though I didn't, because if we don't go on the books, we're account, which we were into account at the start of the year. You know, you're always gonna, I wanted to make that change, and the thing is, it's gonna fudge with the numbers at some point. So yeah, this was a goal I was very aware of throughout the year, and technically I did achieve it. 
even though I didn't really, but technically I did. I'm pretty proud of the series progress I made last year. I really did focus on making progress in series, but not necessarily finishing them because the previous year when I'd had a really strict, like, currently reading series goal, like I had to finish, I, I, was, I, I didn't achieve it the year before, but I was really trying to finish a lot of series. I just kept finishing a series, I only needed one book to finish. That meant there were a lot of series where I had like three books I needed to read to finish the series that were just like languishing. So this year I did focus on doing more series reading that wasn't necessarily, I keep saying this year, 2023. I, I was that kind of girl, I, it took me up until like 20th of January to start writing the new year when I was at school. I keep writing the old one, uh, even though I love a new year. What was I saying? Yes, I made, I made more progress in series rather than finishing them. That's all we need to know. I'd say probably my biggest and most difficult reading goal coming this year <laughs> is I want to get my physical TBR to under 200 books. And I started 2023 on 227 currently uh, owned physical TBR books. Oh my god, guys. Hmm. <laughs> I started the year on 227. I demand a recount. One for Martin. Two for Martin. Would you like another recount? No. Okay, here's the situation. When I did my, all my unread books on my TBR video, I noticed that the number of books I, I held up in that video was about 20 more than I had on my own shelf on Goodreads, which is what I had been pulling these numbers from. Like, this is how many books are on my TBR, because I thought every book was marked. I went through that video and I went and checked every book on Goodreads and I found uh, the 20 books that had been missing. So even though I'm saying is it 224 I sat the year on, it was probably 20 more than that because most of the books were books that I'd got in previous years and just hadn't shelved correctly when I changed how my Goodreads were shelved. It's very complicated. So I thought, okay. So <laughs> realistically it was more like 240 I started the year on. Um, my TBR is currently 261. Yeah. Yeah, so even though I read 150 books, I bought in, I mean, some of the books I read last year were not books on my TBR, but like, how did I not make a dent in it? How did I add 20? We're calling it 20 because really it was 240 at the start of last year because the maths were wrong. How did I add 20 books to my TBR even though I read 155? That is obscene. That is obscene. Yes. This yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> so yeah, needless to say, my TBR, <laughs> it's 261 currently. I haven't made this a goal this year, anything to do with the number of books on my TBR, but like, let's be honest, I would love to get it below 200, which I know is ridiculous. I know there'll be those of you with like four books on your TBR and like, what is wrong with this woman? But, you know, I don't do drugs. If I, want to, if I want the amount of books on my TBR to be my problem, so be it. My final one is to read more 2023 new releases than I read in 2022. So I feel like I'm getting better of reading new releases when they come out. I read, I think, 33, which isn't terrible. You know, I read 130 books, 33 of them were new releases, but I would like to do more. So even if it's 34, again, I'm happy. All I'm asking is one more. <laughs> okay, I think I did this. Let me check my reading spreadsheet. Yes, okay. So in 2023, I read 30. 27 2023 releases. So it was only four more <laughs> than I read in 2022, but I said I wanted to read more and I read more. <laughs> you know, there's certain things in life where you find your level. And this year, I'm not gonna make this a focus. I've got so many books, right? I've got so many books. It would actually be irresponsible of me to say, I want half my reading to be 2024 releases. Yes, of course, I'm gonna keep buying new releases. That's what I do. And I, I know you guys are gonna have so many new releases throughout the year that you want to know my opinions on. But I also do just want to like get through this backlist a bit, right? If I want to achieve my goal of getting my physical TBR down, proportionally, I have to get through <laughs> these books, which none of them, bar maybe like one arc, are 2024 releases. So you're following the logic here. The two don't go together. It's oil and water. <laughs> So anyways, I achieved this goal. So I achieved, really, if we're being honest, three out of four of my reading goals last year. Who is she? Wow, go me, okay. <laughs> I'm amazed by you. Let's get into 2024 goals, shall we, now that we've reacted to those. I wanna talk about my lifestyle goals to begin with, because I feel like I don't share that a lot with you and I just need to talk through my year a bit. I wanna share more of my life with you. I have this ongoing concern with YouTube, which is strange, that I think you guys don't care about my life and just want to hear about me review the books. And so I feel nervous 
sharing things about my life. Also, my life isn't very interesting. I do the same thing every day. I spend time with my family, my boyfriend and my cats. I go for walks, spend time with his family. That, that is basically it. Like, I don't have a very exciting life. But I do want to share more with you because when other YouTubers share their, you know, the mundane day to day, I find it interesting. But anyways, for me, my focus, I came upon this doing yoga the other day. <laughs> uh, my, I think my theme for 2024, my word is cultivate right? I want to cultivate the life that I want to live. When I think of my dream life, just in terms of my daily habits, the, the style of my life, the attitude that I'm going through life with, it is a bit different than what I have now. And I want to cultivate that life. But I like the word cultivate because it gives me this image of me like in a garden, like cultivating this little garden in, in a cottage. Do you know what I mean? It's really important for me in this new year, especially because I haven't had the best start to the new year, right? Usually in the year, I'm like, I'm gonna have these really unrealistic goals. And I feel like this is the start of the year of me being ill at the start of the year actually gave me pause and made me realize I need to give myself time to actually build that up, right? Cultivating is not something that happens overnight, right? Like your garden grows slowly, but you've still got to turn up to water it every day. And I'm not saying like, I'm gonna be like, I have to do this and this and this and this and this habit every single day, right? But I have to, I want to do something constantly, I want to constantly have that in my mind to do something to like bring me closer to what I want to be. Does that make sense? So there's not a rush on it, everything happens slowly, everything grows slowly, everything has to take its time to grow, but it's about turning up every day and, and watering the garden, you know what I mean? So for me, my number one goal in terms of that is to start meditation as a, I don't want to say daily practice, but like Ideally, it would be a daily practice, but again, I'm not putting pressure on myself to do something every single day. I have noticed, I can pinpoint the times in my life when I've <laughs> had it together, and they have been times when I've meditated. And I wanna take a moment to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Aura. For me, meditation really helps control my stress and anxiety. I'm naturally quite a stressed <laughs> and anxious person, particularly when it comes to work and like productivity. I was like this in school a lot. I had to go to like school, like therapy in school for my anxiety from when I was like 12 years old, right? So it's something that's followed me throughout my life and Aura has really been a life changing app for me. Aura is a new mindfulness and sleep app that won the best of Apple award and is used by over 7 million people. It is a all-in-one app for your well-being and sleep. It has thousands of meditations, stories and so much more like CBT, life coaching and breath work. Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists throughout the world. I think what has made Aura really the app that has worked for me in terms of my meditation style, in terms of finding something that really works for me, is there is so much variation. Like I said, there's hundreds of experts and coaches. So you can really find someone with a speaking style that works for you or a, like a meditation pattern that works for you. There's so much variation. With other things I've used in the past, I find it's like one style, this is it. But Aura has so much variation option and choice. So I cannot recommend it enough and you guys can get started for completely free by using my exclusive link down below. The first 500 people to use this link will get a free trial and 25% off. So go check out Aura if you're thinking of starting these kind of practices in this new year like I am. I cannot recommend it enough. So go check out my link down below in the description and in the pinned link down below. Yeah, I think you should all give Aura a go because it's genuinely been revolutionary for me. And then my other life goal for this year is gonna be just to be more caring and also efficient with my time. <laughs> I think I spend far too much time scrolling through social media, doom scrolling if you will, and it, that habit has gotten worse while I've been ill. I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses anymore. But I feel like it's a problem I've had forever, <laughs> especially recently, where I just feel like I feel like I have no time because I'm wasting my time on these other things. And I just want to be more caring when it comes to my time. I want to have more care towards the value of my time and to really value it. Do you know what I mean? And so I guess it's a roundabout way of saying I wanna have less screen time and spend more time doing the things I love. Be that meditation, be that yoga, be that going for walks, be that reading, right? I wanna spend less time 
on the phone. <laughs> it's a big goal for the new year. So that's kind of my life goals. My big, my big goal is cultivate. I think cultivate is such a lovely word when you think of it. I just imagine myself gardening in a little cottage garden, you know? <laughs> know if that's weird but that's kind of the approach I want to take in my life and I, I mentioned this at the start I think I was going to talk about this that you know I don't want to set too many goals for 2024 because it's going to be a wild year <laughs> and this comes into the reading goals which we'll talk about in a second as well but it's going to be a crazy year like I am Tom and I are hoping to buy a place together in the new year which is kind of scary <laughs> kind of scary um so that's gonna be wild and that will take up a lot of our time like finding a place decorating it we buying furniture <laughs> like god you know that's a whole uh part of my life that I want to just I, I that is gonna take up a lot of time and energy and I want to because it's such an exciting thing to happen but that might mean reading takes a bit of a backseat for a while or what have you you know and I just want to give myself the grace and time to like know that this might be a busy year for me and to not put too much pressure on myself you know so shall we just get into my reading goals of the year they're pretty much a lot of my goals that I have every year so <laughs> okay my big goal my big goal, this is the big goal of the year. I tend to have one big goal every year. And my big goal of the year is to have my best reading year ever. And what I mean by this is I want to have my highest average rating of a year ever. I want to read books that I love this year. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I am crazy consistent <laughs> when it comes to my average rating. Almost every single year that I have been reading, I think every single year that I've went back and I've, I've tracked this, my average rating has been 3.7. 3.7, around that. It'll be 3.68 one year, it'll be 3.71 another year. <laughs> but it's literally 3.7 almost every single year. And so my goal this year is for that to be, I mean, let's say 3.8 or above is we're winning but ideally I'd love it to be like a four I I really want to read books that I love I want to have loads of five stars I want to have loads of books that I want to share with you I want to seek out the books that I'm gonna love good luck, good luck. have yeah, fun good luck. hope it works this time yeah. around and so I'm doing I'm gonna be doing a series throughout the year to kind of help this hopefully <laughs> We'll see how it goes. But yeah, I just wanna, I wanna have a better reading year than ever. So there's not much like control over this. There is element of luck to it because who knows? Like it is, it is luck of the draw when you read a book, what you're gonna rate it. It's not like the series goal where like I can numerically make sure that happens. I can't, right? But I want to do things that try to help it happen. We shall see. What if I end up like giving like a, average rating of 3.5 this year? Like what if it goes the other way? I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> that is my big, reading goal of the year. Other goals, we have some returning goals. I wanna read 150 books this year. Again, I'm setting my Goodreads to 100 until I reach that and then we'll up it to 150. Um, like I said, it is gonna be a busy year for me. So I'm a little bit nervous about setting this goal, but I think having done it once, I feel like I can do it again. So yeah, we're setting a goal for 150 books. I wanna read this year. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me nervous, but it does. What is that? It's like 12 books a month, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, 12 and a half books a month. I can do that. I tend to average like 13, 14 books a month now. So it should be easy. It shouldn't be something that's a struggle. <laughs> so it'll be okay. Then we have another goal. I said this would be a goal every year to have a net negative on series. This will, I mean, this will have to end at some point because like we, <laughs> we can't get down to zero. But I am currently reading 34 series. That, that does not include the series I am up to date with. A lot of those series I will no longer be up to date with. Like, because a lot of them have got books coming out this year. So, you know, take that into account. Hopefully I can just stay up to date with them. But yeah, net negative in terms of series. We'll see how that goes. My first book of the year may be a book in a series. <laughs> Not exactly setting myself up for success, but um, yeah, net negative in terms of series is going to be a goal at least for the next few years for me every year. It's something I want to keep tracking. I'm still going to do a few videos a year where I really try to like get some series finished. Um, and that also is just going to be in my reading. Hopefully I can incorporate it more in my reading throughout the rest of the year as well. And then we have two genre specific goals. Number one is to read four classics. I can do this. I can do this. I said this year was gonna be my classics era. I can do this. I'm gonna have a video series hopefully coming out once a quarter that will have me reading one classic. That is totally doable. That is totally, totally doable. Why am I saying no? <laughs> 
It'd be a perfect I can't. Saint. I can't. I've tried it and I failed. Why does everyone I expect can't. it then? I'm not including things like when I read Agatha Christie, I count that as a mystery. But anything else that's cla that's that old, I would probably class as a classic. But Agatha Christie, I tend to not class as classics because also they're not int intimidating. They're they're short, they're easy, they're quick, right? Classics in my brain are anything a bit more intimidating. Yeah, we're gonna be starting this series that I've wanted to start for years to help me read more classics, and I just never do it because it's not a, a video series I necessarily think is gonna do amazing. But I just want to do it, even if I only do it this year. It's four videos, you know, big whoop. Let's get over it, Megan, let's do it. And then I'm also setting a goal. <sighs> I've said this before and I never reach it, but we're gonna do it this year. I wanna read 12 nonfiction. That's one a month, Megan. <laughs> one a freaking month. One a freaking month nonfiction. I probably am not including memoir autobiography in that. I will probably class that as separate in my in my spreadsheet, right? So we're classing, am I, is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. So we're saying non-fiction that's like anything other than memoir or autobiography. I'm gonna be reading two memoirs this month and two non-fiction in January, whoa. <laughs> but so we're only counting two of them towards the goal. But yeah, I've always set this goal. How many did I read last year? Because imagine if I read more than that last year. How many did I read? Let's have a look. Non-fiction, oh, I read five last year. Me and I read one memoir. So we're talking about like doubling. Bloody hell. <gasps> I thought I would have read more than that. Okay, yeah, we're gonna try and read 12. I don't know the last time I read 12 nonfiction a year. I've always said this, before I started my channel, I, when I first got back into reading, bear in mind this wasn't for a very long period because I kind of like got back into reading. I was like, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel. <laughs> but I would read one fiction, one nonfiction, one fiction, one nonfiction. So my reading used to be 50% nonfiction and I would love to get that up again because there's so much nonfiction I want to read. So we just got to get into it. We just got to get into it. I look at so much of the nonfiction on my TBR and I get excited, so get it together. 12 nonfiction, we can do this. <laughs> now my last goal that I thought of whilst filming this video that I remembered I want to do, I want to for the first time ever, <laughs> I want to track my spending when it comes to books. I want to track how much I spend on books this year. Why do I want to do this? I don't know, because I don't necessarily want to change this, but I, I just kind of want to know. I'm just intrigued. I don't have to necessarily do this in the future, but this year I want to track it. If I only do it for a year, I do it for a year. But I just, I'm intrigued to know. Do I want to know? Probably not. But like, I feel like I should know for once and for all. How much do I spend on books in a year? God give me fucking strength. And I'd love to know that in the future. So that I'm like, ah, oh, the books I read this month, I spent this much or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just gonna start tracking that. I've never tracked it before, but it's not, you know. If I stop, I stop. If I'm like, that's enough of knowing that, then I stop. <laughs> so there we have it, everyone. That is me reacting to my 2023 reading goals and talking about what my 2024 life and reading goals are. I would love to know what some of your reading goals for this year are. Hopefully they're a bit more exciting than mine because mine are like the same as usual, <laughs> apart from me trying to like, drastically changed the average rating I'm giving to books out of nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so happy to be back with you guys. And again, make sure you check out Aura down below to try out this wonderful, wonderful app of mindfulness and sleep and meditation and breath work and so many amazing things. I cannot recommend it enough. I'll leave the link down below and I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. I'm back, baby. I'll see you soon. Bye.